On April the 29th, 2019, Mordhau was released. It was different. We had spent years having the same FPS releases or strategy games, yet they hadn't been an on-the-ground medieval epic since the days of chivalry or War of the Roses. I know, who remembers that game? But yet a year after its initial scheduled release, Mordhau came to the masses and did it come with a bang. Not only bringing in the medieval fans of Chivalry and Mountain Blade games, but opening up a new style and genre to the mainstream audience. But how did it begin? Where has it been through this period and what's next for the game? This is Mordhau, one year later. Mordhau really started as a game that many of you might not have heard of. Project Slasher, made by just two people. It's clear that this was the starting point for what Mordhau became, but it doesn't quite look or have the famed fluidity of combat that the new game does. But it was a starting platform, and whilst Project Slasher was a bit of fun, the devs decided to scrap it, create the company, try turning on, and start on a game, based off their first try, called Mordhau. This started really as funding on Kickstarter, but after reaching $200,000 of donations, development really kicked up. Once Mordhau was released, it was the talk of the town. The first IP for a developer selling 200,000 copies within its first week. It was really a massive success. At its peak, reaching 60,000 concurrent players, and for a first IP, that is amazing. Straight away, though, comparisons to Chivalry Medieval Warfare were made. You know, the game I mentioned in the intro. The similar game style, combat, and game modes were looked at, but it wasn't really a problem for Mordhau. In fact, I think it worked in its favour, bringing older Chivalry fans back and being pleasantly surprised by the superior graphics, customization, and especially combat, bringing so much more fluidity, animations, and of course, feel. Each weapon gave the player a new fighting experience, whether you're a giant maul-wielding maniac, an honourable greatsworded knight, or a scummy, sly, <laughs> rapier kid. There was something for everyone. But with great success can come some even greater failures. Luckily, Mordhau was fairly smooth, yet there are some things worth mentioning. While there were many, many bugs, weapons not showing in hands, horses flipping off into oblivion, people falling through the world, you know, you know what I mean. You know what, let me just show you a few. Furthermore, the map glitching, oh Jesus, the map glitches, it became more of a game mode in itself, people trying to find the best ways to get out of the boundaries. I guess in the end it helped the devs fix the issues, but wow, people were persistent. And it made for some teeth grinding games when some kid found a way out of the map into an unreachable spot. We all have been in that situation. Much like any multiplayer game though, the servers were paramount, and I think it's safe to say Tritonian were not expecting the huge amount of players that would join from the start. And and this in itself caused many issues. Servers constantly crashing, going down, the server browsing screen in itself taking more than 30 years to load up on a good day, teams glitching, random match winning and losing, boy was it an interesting few first days. But like any good developer, they worked day and night and soon enough, the issues were fixed. Unfortunately, some issues cannot just be patched out of the game. Whilst people came in droves to support the game, some just wanted to tear it down, and perhaps sometimes they had some good points, but the way they went about it was not really professional. As the character customization got deeper, it let people make whatever they want, make the character look however they want. And of course, a few dum-dums took this a bit too far, along with a few racist jokes on the forums. The game itself was amassed with stabs, jabs, and all the insults under the sun, which is sort of expected for a multiplayer-only game. I mean, the internet is a weird place where people just say the worst possible things to let off some steam. And with a fast-paced, intense game like Mordhau, it was pretty rampant. But soon, of course, a mute button was added, and that... That was that was the end of it. Not really much of a big deal. Even though some articles continued to call the devs racist for any reason they can find, but you can't please everyone. 
But time passed and bugs were being fixed left, right and centre. And with that came the era of new content. The developers slowly started to add more balances, weapons and customization. The map Crossroads was the newest map to be added in. A large open map with a treehouse fort centrepiece. If I'm going to be honest, it's one of my least favourite maps, but it did something interesting. It added the possibilities for devs to test out some new things, learn more about cavalry fighting as the outsides were perfect for charging around with lance and horse, and of course, the addition of mortars. Not the first siege weapon in the game, but oh boy did it join in with the catapult for being the number one reason for friendly fire in matches, taking longer to load but having a more powerful shot, an explosive shot that would kill anything it was aimed at or more commonly, the person manning it, as the bomb sailed into the War 3 feet in front. With small introductions of weapons and perks being added, it wasn't really anything massive of note, until Fate Rear. It was always a big talking point since release of why Mordhau didn't have sieges. There wasn't anything there to simulate the medieval chaos in the battleground. But there are hints, castles in the backgrounds of maps, siege weaponry scattered throughout and even on mountain peaks ending with the attacking team battering down a gate with a ram. We'll get onto that a bit later. So it was clear that it was on their mind. Fate Rear added in a massive new map, perhaps the biggest of the game so far. A large castle surrounded by camps and forts and it was an attacker's job to break in. We saw the introduction of the invasion mode which helped this, giving a clearer attacking and defending side to the game and of course the siege tower. The attackers had to push it up to the walls while all making sure that it wasn't burnt down by the defending army and oh boy was it a lot of fun. Perhaps even now by far my favourite map to hop on and play some good old fashioned Mordhau. In terms of a larger scale game mode, I think it is the closest to that old feeling of chivalry that it once had. Some extra additions that came later in the game were competitive modes centred around duelling and I have to be honest this isn't really my strong suit. When the game first came out I was pretty good at duelling and fighting but I sort of lost it over the last year or so with less and less play so by the time the competitive stuff came out I didn't really jump into it all that much. But it adds a new outlet for people that love to do that sort of thing as Mordhau's main servers catered towards a more casual play. Time passed and more updates were added, balancing issues, more customization, that sort of thing. Nothing really all that notable until March. March this year brought perhaps the biggest update in terms of maps for a while. Not only did it bring the new map Castello, but also the expansion to an existing map, Mountain Peak, which as I mentioned earlier, already teased a siege-like ending. In Mountain Peak, once the attacker had pushed the ram up to the gate, instead of the match just ending, they would batter down the door, and the final defence would be from inside the castle, very reminiscent to a certain chivalry maps of the past, and that is a good fun one. Something I hope they plan to do for the majority of the initial maps is add in expansions. I think especially camp has the option for the expansion as, you know, there's like a castle off way in the back. It's the camp before a main castle. It makes sense. And as I mentioned, the whole new map of Castello was added, but at this point in time for me, it's one of the weaker ones, if I'm going to be honest. Taking place all inside a city, it offers some really cool close combat options, but there's just a bit too much jumping around and, you know, going on walls and up ladders, rather than an all-out plane on the field fighting in warfare. Whilst being my least favourite map though, I'll be giving it a bit more of a chance as I'll play it a bit more. And I do think it works well, especially in the Horde game mode as well, hiding in nooks and crevices places for archers to hold out. But what is the future for this game? Something that hasn't really been a big option until recent is modding. Mods have finally got to a great point in Mordhau and had some really nice integrations from the developers to help build a modding player base. More creators can post their mods, they can be downloaded onto a server, then anyone joining that server will automatically download the needed files for the mod, creating a really easy to use system that anyone can play with. Whether or not this works for big overhauls in the future, only time will tell. But for now, it's introduced some really fun roleplay servers with wacky fun weapons to try out. So if you haven't done that already, I definitely recommend you guys going and checking that out. But the Mordhau devs are still hard at work, even now fixing issues that the new game modes and maps have raised. So I'm sure that will continue, as well as content additions. I'm looking forward to seeing if they do any more expansions to the maps that we already have. But as I said, mods, in my opinion, is the big future for this game. It isn't necessarily the most replayable game that will go on for years and years, so to keep it active, some game changing mods would have to come in. Now we already have the roleplay stuff, so maybe even a full persistent world type experience would be an option if the map makers are up to the task. I think that would work really well, like a mountain blade persistent world mod only in first person with the Mordhau combat.
But what do you think? Where do you think it will go next, or will it just sit for a while until the developers announce a sequel? I mean, look what we have on the horizon. From what I've heard, Shivery 2 seems to be shaping up to actually be quite a good game, despite first impressions, and might take something to keep Mordhau alive once that release comes. So make sure you leave your comment down below on what you think is going to happen to the game. But what a great first year it's been. A fantastic ride for this medieval epic. And it can only go up from here. In the next year of Maud Howe. <laughs>